the heart of the Arxon 85 lies a fuel system designed for operational confidence no matter the conditions. This reflects our commitment to safety, redundancy and control versatility. On this walkthrough, I'll take you through the system, through all of its features, how we move fuel around the boat, how we filter it and what we do in various scenarios. There's over 17,000 litres of fuel on an Arxon 85 and this is divided between six tanks. Four of these are bunker tanks integral to the hull structure and two of these are separate day tanks in the engine room. This configuration allows the maximum versatility in terms of how we manage fuel, how we move it around the boat to balance the trim of the boat, but also if necessary, it allows us to segregate fuel if it becomes contaminated. The day tanks are only fed from the bunker tanks via a filtration system, meaning that the machinery is only ever running off clean filtered fuel. It's imperative that we always maintain access to all of the fuel on board. So to achieve that, we have three different means of pumping fuel, starting with our filtration pump here, which pumps through these two filters, and that ensures that any moisture is removed from the fuel, any particles, any other contaminants, so that the fuel going to the day tanks is always clean. There's then an additional set of filters between the day tank and each piece of machinery. This filtration unit features two filters, so normally you'd be operating on one of these filters, and if at any point the system detects moisture in the fuel or it detects that the filter is becoming clogged, it'll sound an alarm and it allows you to remotely actuate this lever here, which changes between filter one and filter two, or vice versa. It means you don't have to rush down and immediately manually change that filter or clean anything. This gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you operate the boat. You can then come down and drain off any water into the waste oil tank whilst you carry on happily operating on the clean filter. After the filtration pump, we then have our high capacity fuel pump here. Now that operates at around about 200 litres a minute. So that means you can really quickly adjust any trim or list just by the push of a button, either from the engine room here or from the bridge systems upstairs. Ultimately, if you found yourself in a situation where your two powered pumps had failed or you had an electrical issue, you've got your trusty backup manual pump here. And that means that you can manually pump fuel from any tank to any tank on the boat. And it involves a bit of elbow grease, a bit of time, but it's a really worthwhile thing to have if you find yourself in that situation. I'm here in the accommodation of the boat. Easily accessible under the floor here are some fuel valves. So we've talked about how fuel is actually pumped, but equally important is how the source tanks and the destination tanks are selected. So when you press a button on the bridge system to control which tank you're drawing from and which tank you're pumping to, it's these valves that you're controlling. So again, it's really important that in a power failure scenario, you can still actuate these valves. So on the side, there's a small lever. So in the event of a power failure, I can come down, I can close the tanks I don't want, I can open the tanks that I do want, and then I can carry on pumping fuel around even manually. All of the fuel tank fittings are really easily accessible. So just lifting up this sole panel here, we have immediate access to temperature sender, level sender, and here we have a sounding point here. So in the event that you had a problem with your fuel monitoring system, you can lift this panel, pop this cap off, rod the tank at its deepest point, and using the provided calibration charts, you can see exactly how much fuel we have left. Now in a maintenance period, if you wanted to completely strip this tank dry of fuel, you could also pop this cap off and then lower your pump hose right into the bottom of the tank there. So I'm here on the port side deck and we're going to look at one of the two fuel bunkering stations. So tucked away neatly in the bulwark here, we have a lockable hatch. And inside here we have our two port side tank fillers and we have our two port side tank breathers. And these are in a sealed box here. So any fuel spillages are all contained within here. And then there's a little drainage tap on the bottom so it can be, any spilled fuel can be drained away into a suitable container. And the cool thing about these is we can use this port side to fill all six tanks in the boat if we like. So for instance, we could be filling into this forward port one here and that tank can spill over into the aft one. At the same time, we can set our onboard fuel transfer system to be pumping from port tank to starboard tanks, which can then in turn spill over or be pumped. And then there's also the day tanks that we talked about in the fuel transfer segment. If we're restricted on where we're taking on fuel, whether it be the length of the hose or the, the proximity of the boat to the fuel berth, we've got good options there. And this is repeated on the starboard side. So whichever way the boat is berthing, we have that same amount of flexibility. I'm here on the main bridge deck and this houses one of our three control and monitoring system terminals. And this terminal here you can see is set to the fuel page and you can see our four bunker tanks 
and our two end room day tanks. So these bunker tanks, as you can see, are nice and full and the day tanks are starting to run down a little bit. So we're gonna just run through a demonstration of how to top up those day tanks. I'm going to use this starboard aft bunker tank. So there's a source selection valve there. So I touch that, that's now turned green, so that's open. And then I'm going to pump fuel to the port day tank. So I'll open that valve there. And we're going to do this with the filtration pump. So I touch that pump there. And now you can see everything's green. You can see the arrows, that's now moving fuel to the port, port day tank. And when that tank is, is full, it will automatically shut the pump off and shut the valves. But if I say wanted to now change over to the starboard day tank, it's just a case of opening the starboard valve while it's still running and then closing that port valve. And now we're pumping to the starboard day tank. The other thing that we can do is continuously circulate fuel between the bunker tanks themselves. So as I said before, you can pump fuel from any tank to any tank. So if now I decided that I'm concerned there might be some condensation in the fuel and I want to separate that out whilst we're underway on a long passage, I can now decide, okay, well, I'm now going to pump fuel from this same starboard aft bunker tank to the starboard forward bunker tank, which is a case of tracing the line back here, opening this valve, and then closing the valve to the day tank. So we're now moving fuel from that tank through the pump to this tank here. And then if we wanted to do, do that a little quicker, to let's say manage the trim of the boat without the filtration, it will be a case of starting that transfer pump and shutting off the filtration pump. So we can do that with any combination of tanks. The fuel system on the Arxon 85 isn't just functional, it's robust, it's cleanly installed, and it's thoughtfully engineered for real world cruising operations. From the filtration system to the general level of redundancy, it's one of the many ways we ensure the boat performs like a commercial vessel, but with the comfort and convenience expected of a private yacht. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section, or alternatively, get in touch directly with us at www.arxon.com.